It's the National Football League on EA Sports. And if it's in the game, it's in the game. It's the Chargers and the Jags, and it comes your way next. Smack dab in the middle of I-295 that encircles the city of Jacksonville in Northeast Florida. There's a good look at TIAA Bank Field. Today, it's week 12 of the NFL season, and we've got a good one in store between the Los Angeles Chargers and the Jacksonville Jaguars. So here's the Charger offense making their way out. As we get a peek at Matt Ryan, a man who's been in the league since back in 2008. So first and 10 now from the 30. Now a first carry for Derrick Henry. And he powers through the first wave, but he's going to be swallowed up behind the line of scrimmage. Nice play right there to stop him behind the line, but I want to see how this defense continues to play him here in the first half. Yeah, we know. You know better than I. He has the ability to take over a game. So what do you do? Yeah, I think you have to make sure that you bottle him in at varying levels. Because if you crowd everyone to the line of scrimmage, if he breaks through, there's nothing but room for him. An early tough test on the opening drive. This is third and eight. To throw is Ryan. Looking for Landry, and it's intercepted. It's David Arnett picking it off. And the return will be stopped at the 34-yard line. After the turnover, here's Herbert. And this is incomplete. But defensively, you're over there trying to catch your breath and trying not to show the offense that you're a little bit fatigued. You're right back out there after the turnover. Now they've got to work towards getting another couple of stops and forcing them into at least a long field goal situation. Oh, he's going to let this go for the end zone. And this one taken in on the right sideline, but not in the field of play. They say it's incomplete. The throw led him a little too far. It brings up third down. There is something to a game plan with trying to keep a defense honest with a guy with that type of speed. You do so. Well, that's into a sea of bodies, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Kelvin Joseph. And the Chargers are going to have it here at their own 15. Well, a shaky start for both quarterbacks now. We have the interception on the opening drive, and now they throw it right back to him. So does that mean we're really kind of starting from the beginning, Brandon, right? Both of them have done it, so we kind of start from scratch. Looks to me like both of these defenses have done their homework, and they're executing quite well. And he'll fight forward on the straight-ahead running for just a couple of yards, second down. The numbers on the ground for Henry last week. North of 100 yards, the two scores. And, you know, you got to give a lot of credit to the O-line. We talked a lot about him, but offensive line was good, too. They're obviously in sync with each other, whether it's zone blocking, power running game, no matter what, he understands how to read them and find the creases that they provide. Now left side, a completion to his tight end. And way up past the 35 before he's taken down. When you get a big tight end like this, sometimes it takes more than one man to bring him down. Oftentimes, your best bet, just jump on and hold on and wait for your teammates to arrive to help get him on the ground. A first down carry for Henry. Finding some room at midfield. And he takes it across the 50 to the 46-yard line. I remember watching Derrick Henry come out of Alabama and sitting with some scouts, and one of the debate points with him was, while at Bama, how often did he have to deal with contact near the line of scrimmage? They were so good up front that he often got to the second level pretty easily. I think he's starting to answer those questions with runs like that. He's a physical, physical guy. On the tackle there, Zach Sealer out of Ferris State. Yeah, I don't know if it's exactly a win-win, but if you're on offense, you'll take that kind of a run, all right? It was kind of stacked up, found a little bit of yardage, and frankly, they're pretty close to staying on schedule on offense. The playbook is still open for the coordinator. And he'll be brought down at about the 42. They have three yards on first down, just one yard there. On third down, Ryan over the middle and into the hands of his receiver, Landry. And they'll get him down about three yards short of the first. Two yards is all they'll get on the completion. It's fourth down. And 
And his kick is good. He got every bit of that one as it's good from 56 yards out. So he's been automatic to this point of the season, and he connects on the field goal there. And what a luxury it is to have a kicker you can depend upon, partner, because he hasn't missed all year long. Converts on that one as well. And kudos to you. You didn't jinx it. Now here's Johnson. And he'll be tackled just shy of the 25. We got it. The Jacksonville offense set to begin their next drive. They threw an interception the first time they had the football, only gave up three points off of that, so it shouldn't be a difficult hole to overcome. It really shouldn't as long as they're not listening to the chatter coming from the other side because when you throw a pick, look, I know defensive backs, they have a tendency to be a little bit loud after they take one away, but they also have a tendency to gamble a little bit more thinking they'll get a second one. Maybe they can take advantage of that with some double moves. He'll be hit down at the 33, five yards on the play. Well, this defense for the Chargers, they were terrific last week in the win over Denver. Yeah, we're definitely in top form and pitched a shutout, as a matter of fact. Oh, it's intercepted. He was trying to get it to Ridley. Picked off by Bryce Callahan. And he brings this one back. It's a pick six and a Charger TD. Oh, yeah. Now, remember, this is the number one defense in the National Football League. There's a good example of why. Shows that they set an aggressive tone, not just stopping the run, not just getting after the quarterback, but the ball's in the air. They treat it like they're the receivers, and they went after that one and took it all the way. Extra point by Blankenship is up and good, and the lead grows to 10-0. So an early 10-0 lead for them now as they kick it away. Returning it, Johnson. And a good return as he'll be stopped just shy of the 30-yard line. Jaguars come to the line to start their next drive. And job one here, Charles, just keep possession of the football. Two drives, two turnovers to this point. You're exactly right, Doctor. Hippocratic Oath, first do no harm. And right now, they're harming themselves on offense. I like that. No one is mistaking me for a doctor, though. But thank you, Dr. Davis. A good gain on first. Has him set up with second in just a couple of inches now from the 29. 10-0 the score after one on EA Sports. On second down, here's the option. So that, that was a very nice play, Charles, from a very speedy cornerback. And I do believe that sometimes as a defender, when you see read option, you're just making an educated guess because the offense feels like no matter what move you make, it turns out right for them. Sometimes it can burn you making that guess, but I think here, he said, I'm pursuing the quarterback no matter what he does, and this time, he picked the right option. Three yards on that last carry. Here's second and seven. Justin Herbert looking to pass. Open man is the tight end, Nick Boyle. That was a round run, not just with dexterity, but with intelligence. Found the hole in the zone, made sure the quarterback saw him, and was able to make the sure catch and flip the down marker back to one. On first down, it's Herbert. Open man right side is Shark. Five yards on the catch there, brings up second down. They'll go option to the short side. And he stopped immediately there. Call it no gain on the keeper, and it's going to bring up a third down. Now it's Herbert. That swung out wide to Harris. And he is going to have a Jags first down by about a yard as they find a way to convert there on third down and five. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and ten. Out of the gun, Herbert. He'll get this complete to Cooper Cup. And he's got this down almost to the 20 before he's dropped. Herbert setting up to throw on first down. And he takes a shot on the release as this will be incomplete. Here's second and ten. 
A run with Harris out of the shotgun. He'll get it inside the red zone, but only for a couple down to the 19. The Jaguars on third down. Just one for three thus far. This is third and eight. We've hit the two-minute mark of the first half. 10-0 our score. Play action. It's Herbert. And he's going to go down. They sack him back right around the 30. C.J. Mosley, the linebacker, making sure his presence is felt. They just gave up a sack there, and if I'm not mistaken, they gave up four last week, didn't they? Yes. And they're just looking really porous, aren't they? They really are, and I'm wondering if they're going to have to start thinking about keeping the tight end in, maybe a back, someone to help assist, because right now, the quarterback's been getting hit a lot in the last couple of games. Sanders' kick is good. And they get themselves on the board here. It's 10-3. So they do get three points, but that's now three drives with only the three points, not a ratio that's going to win you many ball games. Not at all, Brandon. And think about it this way. We all know payoff is the key, right? And wouldn't we love to have the concession on every T-shirt that's been printed in football that says finish on it because that's the mantra everywhere. Got to be able to finish drives, put points on the board. Now the Chargers offensive unit ready to see what they can do here. And still plenty of time remaining here in the half, more than a minute. We'll see if they just want to protect that lead or try to add on to it. Well, with as much time as is left on the clock, I would imagine it would be the latter. I think they're going to try and add on to it. So what they're going to tell the team is very simply, if you can get out of bounds after making a play downfield, terrific. If you can't, everyone hustle to the line of scrimmage, either run another play or clock it and start over again. Now, meanwhile, a pass that should have been intercepted but it winds up falling incomplete. They have to like what they've done defensively here at the outset of this drive. They forced a couple of incomplete passes, bring up a third and ten. Don't be surprised to bring a little pressure on this snap. On third down, Henry. And they're able to get this one across the 35. The Chargers going to signal for the first of their timeouts as the clock will stop with 55 seconds to go until halftime. A solid run by Derrick Henry, and here's another first and ten. From the shotgun, Ryan. And yeah, that'll be knocked away. It's incomplete. Receiver coaches preach there, guys, all the time. Separation, that's what's going to make the play successful. That time there was very little, and I think they were actually fortunate that it was only knocked away and not intercepted. The Ryan's throw, it's complete into the hands of Higby. And he gets this one to midfield before he's brought down. Now the Chargers will use the second of their timeouts as they'll stop it with just over 40 seconds to go in the first half. From midfield now, here's Ryan. Looking for the out route, it's completed to Landry. And he's going to be out of bounds, but not before he takes it inside the 40. Same result as last play, 14 yards and another first down. There we go. After reviewing the play, moving on the field, Dan. So from the 36 now, first and 10. Throwing again, Ryan. Got a man, it's Higby complete. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. And now they're in the hurry up. From the red zone now, here's Ryan on first down. And he's got it. And the Chargers are going to have first and goal as they try to finish off this drive with six points. Now a timeout single for, and they'll get him with 10 seconds to go before halftime. Two big plays in succession. Not sure this D knows what hit him, but now they got to get ready. It's first and goal. Here's Ryan to throw. And that's caught by Landry for a Charger touchdown. A great play there in the final seconds of the first half. And the Chargers would extend their lead here just before halftime.
Extra point by Blankenship is up and good. And the lead is now 17-3. So a nice drive put together there. They go 75 yards in nine plays. And it ends with the Chargers getting into the end zone. Maybe time for one play on offense. Seven seconds to go in the half as the kick is away. Johnson now returning. And a good return. Able to get out across the 35 to the 36. A final shot before the break for Herbert. That'll be caught. It's Cup. And they've got it well across midfield down to the 40 before it's all said and done. So we have reached halftime intermission with the visiting Chargers on top as we now go downstate to Orlando. And just like that, on we head to half number two. Both these teams running through their final adjustments before they head out of the locker room. We're just about set for the second half. And to bring it your way, let's go back upstate to Jacksonville and Brandon God. All right, Coach, thank you very much as we welcome you back for quarter number three. The Jaguars with work to do. They trail here as we are back underway on EA Sports. Here comes Johnson on the return. And they're going to start this drive in pretty good shape up past the 30. Out come the Jaguars now as they'll go on offense first here in this third quarter. And they're still very much in this game, although they do trail. What's the game plan, Charles, for the second half? It might be a little counterintuitive because most people will think losing equals passing the ball more, but I'd establish the running game. They kind of went away from it in the first half. I think if they get back in balance, it'll help them when they put the ball back in the air. 57 is the mic. Rock 57. They hand this off to Harris. And he'll work this one up to about the 38. They get seven out of that, so they're left with a third and three. Kid had a ton of success here so far, but you get the feeling that he might be on the verge of popping one. Yeah, even on that one, there was a little bit of a hole, but it closed there quickly at the end. And for the moment, this will be a first down. But we have a marker on the field. Let's see if this stands. Come on, dog! So a decent gain but all for naught on the penalty. It's too bad, isn't it? They were feeling pretty good about it. The only people celebrating, the guys who just gave up that play. Gonna throw on third down with Herbert. And that will be incomplete. He's had trouble finding open receivers all game, CD, and that's because really there hasn't been many. This defense has been all over them. Yeah, they're one of the better defenses in the league, and every time I talk to someone around the NFL, they all say the exact same thing. They're so fundamentally sound, it's hard to execute against them. A good return there. Call it 13 yards. And it'll be Charger football here as they take over. So here are the Chargers to take over. Last week they defeated the Broncos and they've got the lead here as well as they work with a first and ten. Meanwhile, Ryan Stroh taken in by Adams. Here we go. Here we go. And he'll be taken down, but not go. before he works it past the 50. And now we get into the psychology of the whole thing because a lot of teams with a two-score lead in the third quarter, they almost become defensive with their offense, just playing not to lose. I think with this team, you got to figure at this point, this is a great spot for them to go into attack mode, really try to put the hammer down and finish this one off. It's a pickup of four, and it'll bring up second down. Inside four minutes to go, third quarter. Henry again on second down. Powers through him. And he is close to a first down as he's tackled at the Jaguars 38. 45 yards on the ground for him so far. Could be four down territory even if they don't get this, but they need just a few inches here on third. Tenth carry now for Derrick Henry. And he gets it to the 34. Good enough for the first. Well, you certainly have to give a little credit here because they're playing this game now at their pace. This is ball control football, sustained runs, taking their time, and making it work. 
They'll run on first down. It's Henry, and he'll fight forward on the straight-ahead running for just a couple of yards, second down. Certainly a nice job there by the defense rallying to the football and getting him on the ground, but I think the play gets made by the defensive front because if they can't get upfield, their job is to go ahead and get low, almost get into a ball sometimes, stack things up, and make it difficult for the runner to find a hole. That's pretty much meat and potatoes right there, wasn't it? Just go right at him and let your big horse charge up the middle. Not too fancy there, was it? Nothing fancy at all, challenging that defense. And on that go around, the offense won the challenge. And he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. Jamal Adams coming up from his safety spot to make the play. So after the run for no gain, here's second and ten. Now they'll throw it with Ryan. Oh, the ball comes out on the hit, but they'll say it's incomplete. Oh, that's got to frustrate him a little bit because they nearly got to him there, and it would have been the first sack of the game. Instead, they're able to influence the release, and they did force the incomplete pass. Out of the gun, it's Ryan. And he's got the hook up to Landry. And he is going to be stopped at the 12, short of the first down. The completion good for only six, and that'll bring up fourth. Blankenship's kick is good. And that'll push the lead up to 17. So just three points there, but that important in the grand scheme of things is it's now a three-score lead. And to now, the other guys haven't shown that they can do anything offensively, so just take the points, keep adding that cushion, and let your defense win you the football game. Out is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. Now here's Johnson. And they're going to start this drive in pretty good shape up past the 30. Let's go, let's go. Here comes the Jaguars offense as they get set here. And they're coming off a three and out, my friend. I think they've got to look at that play sheet and go to a spot that they haven't gone before. Time to shake things up a little bit to try and get this offense moving. Okay, so how do you do that? How do you shake things up? You look at what you've called before and realize it hasn't worked <laughs> Go to so something well. else. And maybe you try and find one of those special plays for one of your better players and maybe try and hit something big and get things going in the excitement. On Herbert, his third interception. Picked off by the linebacker, C.J. Mosley. And he brings this one back. It's a pick six and a Charger TD. Come on now, let's make it happen, baby. Let's make it happen. It goes without saying, but I'm going to say it anyway. That's a ball he would like to have back, and it lands right in the lap of the defender from there. He doesn't have very far to go before he gets to the end zone, and he got there in a hurry. Now Blankenship on for the PAT. And the lead is now 24. And that is going to do it for this third quarter of action. We'll return with more after this. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Set now to kick this one away, and off it goes. Returning it, Johnson. And he won't quite make it to the 25. Jacksonville set to go again offensively. We certainly had a sense coming in here that these guys were in for a tough one on the road. That has been how this ball game has played out. They trail big as we continue on now here in this fourth quarter. Fresh off of six the other way, it's Herbert. He'll get this one to Cup complete. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. Well, I can put my defensive cap on right now, and I know they're saying don't give up any big plays now. They've controlled this game throughout, and all they want to do is see it through to the end. I think they let their guard down a little bit with that last completion. Sometimes when you're trying not to give up bigger plays, you don't react as fast as you should on other throws. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. To throw once more on second and 10. Herbert. There goes a deep ball in zone. And that is caught, but the back judge right there to say incomplete. So now third and 10, a big play to start the drive, but nothing since. Here's Herbert. Ball oh, had his hands on it, couldn't bring it in. Pretty symptomatic of how this game's been going. 
right, they're going to try and keep hope alive here on fourth down. They're going for it. Fourth down for Herbert. Desperation time. He's going to have his running back. It's complete. He's going to go out of bounds, but he takes Let's this go. one down just shy of the 20. On first down, Justin Herbert. And that is incomplete here. They've given up a few first downs on this drive, but getting the incompletion there, that should give them something to build on and maybe turn the tide. Throwing again on second and 10. Herbert got his man complete over the middle. It's Harris. They get six. That'll leave them with third and four. And we see another pitch and catch there to the running back. This position just continues to evolve. They become just as critical to the passing attack as a lot of receivers' tight ends because their ability to make people miss in the open field can really generate big plays for an offense. Give them a couple on the run as it brings up the fourth down. They snap it to Herbert. The open man is Shark. It's complete. And the Jags are going to have first and goal as they try to finish off this drive with six points. They'll try and run for it on first and goal. And the hole closes quickly here. He can fight only to about the four. Only a yard that time. Second and goal. Justin Herbert looking to pass. And that is knocked away in the middle of the field and incomplete. At this point in the game, they've got to continue to try anything they can. They're still working at it, even though this one feels like a lost cause. Now Herbert, third and goal. And that is caught. Touchdown, Jacksonville. Nick Burrow, his first touchdown on the year. And the Jaguars are finally into the end zone here in this fourth quarter. So the Jags will keep the offense out there as they'll decide to go for two. And they'll have Herbert try and throw for it. And that's caught at the two. And he will get into the end zone to shave two more points off the deficit. But it's still an uphill battle from here, that's for sure. But that makes it a two-score game. And now we see why teams practice so much on the two-point conversion, why you have more than one play ready. Because you may need multiples to throw out a ball game. There's a great example right there. First down, Henry fighting him off. 72 yards rushing for him now in the ball game. I have to chuckle to myself a little bit, Brandon, because right now I could be in that huddle with that offensive line. I know exactly what they're saying. play here we're gonna call a timeout run the football <laughs> we've got control of this thing get in behind us and let's go their time to shine second down they go again with Henry and he'll go down here at the 35 yard line so fresh out of the two minute warning and here's another timeout taken with 155 remaining not totally home free yet, but it's looking good as they come up first and ten. Derrick Henry. Pretty nice, aggressive run there before being brought down just inside of the 30. Whistles now and a timeout. So defensively, they burn it here with 151 left. So they come up on second down, and they can get another run like we just saw. Would likely put an end to this thing. Henry will get it. He's been busy today. And they'll be inside the 25 now at the 24. We got this. The Jaguars now will use the last of their timeouts, and they'll be disappointed to have to burn one there after giving up the first down.
They'll try and run some clock here as they keep it on the ground. A strong, broken tackle on that one. And then they get him to the ground just shy of the 15. A good run got seven on first. Here's second and three. A shotgun handoff to Henry. Let's do it. No doubt those are the types of carries they're looking for here, Charles. The lead in the fourth quarter. This is when coaches that have a reliable running game, they breathe a little easier on the sideline. Yeah, they love the idea that they can take the air out of the football at this point of the game. That means they're really counting on that offensive line, counting on the runners, taking care of the football because you're going to tell your quarterback. And he's not able to get away. Sacked back at the 22. Shaquille Barrett. Give him the credit for the sack and a loss of 14 yards. So this one's over. It's in the win column for the L.A. Chargers. And this, not always an easy proposition, Charles. You had a West Coast team that traveled east, but they got the job done. And there's so much that goes into it because your body time and your body clock different from what you're used to west because if you go east, you're going to lose up to three hours. Right? So is your body going to be awake when it's time to play? A lot of teams actually rehearse it. They practice it. Maybe the week of the game, they move everything up to that time frame so guys get used to doing it that way. I remember when I played at Tennessee, when we had to go from east to west, our trainer Tim Karen said, leave your watches on east coast time. Every piece of information we got was east coast standard time. Try to psychologically tell us what to do as well as prepare our bodies the same way. So 